So, welcome to the site called Magdala. And you are looking at the synagogue found a number of years ago here at the ancient site of Magdala. And we're looking at the reconstructed entryway into the synagogue. What's amazing is Magdala. This is a first century synagogue. It would have been opened in Jesus' day. And in Matthew 4 you read, and Jesus taught throughout the Galilee in all of their synagogues. So from a biblical perspective, it is likely that Jesus was here <laughs> once, maybe many times. Another aspect as well is of Mary Magdalene. Miriam is Mary's name in Hebrew. And her name is not Mary Magdalene, Miriam Magdalene. It just means Miriam from Magdala. You never have a name Mary Magdalene. Uh, from Hebrew, it's Miriam from Magdala. That would be the proper way of understanding that. So it's really fascinating to see this. And let's come in and to take a look, closer look as we take a look at the entryway. And as we come to the entryway, both left and right is the study hall. So you would have Bet Zephyr here and Bet Midrash. So the students that are ages 5 through about 11 or 12 would study here at the main entry hall. And this stone supposedly is a table for, I don't know, uh, putting markers down or perhaps scrolls. You can see the benches around the outside for the students. And so as every synagogue would have a Bet Zephyr for ages 5 through 12, and then Bet Midrash for the students that are older, ages 12 and beyond, who had a talent and a propensity for being able to study the Torah and teach the Torah and even uh, comment on the Torah. The steps leading from the Bet Midrash come into the synagogue proper, and you can see that off on the left are the remains of a couple of the pillars, and on the back pillar, you can actually see the uh, decorative outside of the pillar itself. And the plaster and the painting on the plaster is still there. This room, which is on the right from the main entrance, you can still see the decorative painting and the plaster that goes up on the rock wall. This is a very good perspective of how things look like in those days. They would plaster over the rocks and then from there decorate. And this is the place where they would uh, store the Torah scrolls. And they probably would have a scroll for uh, Breshit, Genesis, and uh, Shemot, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. You're looking also at a thing called the Magdala Stone, which was a very interesting find here at Magdala. And this stone could very well have be uh, something where they would actually read the Torah scroll, or place the Torah scroll so the person who is reading it uh, would actually have a place to put that down. And let me zoom in on the camera so you can see it. And you can see the menorah. This would then be considered the oldest carved menorah in existence in Israel. So again the menorah is a major symbol of the Jewish people and their faith and their walk with God. So many different representations or rabbinical interpretations of the menorah. It represents the Jewish people, it represents the temple, it represents God. God is the light of the world. It represents the Jewish people. They're considered in the in, in book of Isaiah that they're the light of the world to bring God, the knowledge of God, to all the nations of the earth. So this is a picture of the Magdala Synagogue here in Magdala, just outside of the wonderful, beautiful city of 
Tiberius. And again, what's chilling to me is Matthew 4. That indeed Jesus taught throughout the Galilee in their synagogues. The God of the universe, the God who created everything, the God who was walking with Adam and Eve in the garden, the God who gave the Torah to Moses, God who became flesh and Jesus was here. He walked here. He taught here. He was part of this culture and perhaps a regular visitor to this synagogue. 